Hey guys, welcome to Jen's Lemonade Life. This is a video that I wanted to do and I've had it requested for ooh, a long time. <laughs> um, I've actually been cutting my little fur baby's hair for four years. Uh, don't judge me, she's looking really bad right now. I needed this quite a while ago. But anyway, without further ado, let's talk about why, how, and do this thing. Introductions first. This is Mia. Oh, I adopted her, I don't know, five years ago? Something like that. Gosh, time flies. Um, so she, I'm at least her third owner. <laughs> she has a very vague history behind her. Anyway, um, she is a Bichon Frise mini poodle mix, or so I was told. And this little girl is non-shedding, so her hair is always growing, or her fur is always growing. It needs to be groomed regularly. So about four years ago, I moved to Idaho and did not have one of my best friends as a dog groomer anymore. And I took it into my own hands to start doing her hair. My mom would do that with their dogs when they had them. And um, honestly, the biggest reason is it saves me money. It saves me a lot of money because they have to go regularly and just trying to afford life. <sighs> Hashtag adulting, am I right? Okay. In addition to that, uh, just, I'm, I'm terrified, I'm horrified about what could happen to her. They can be aggressive with her to make sure she's cooperating. They might cut her quick and just put like the stop bleed stuff on it and I wouldn't know and I don't want my baby to be hurt because she's my little baby. <laughs> and also my parents, they uh, took two dogs to the groomer once and brought them back with a boatload of fleas that they didn't have before. So, uh, you know, there's multiple reasons that I do this and I'm sure if you're watching this, you share some of those reasons. Comment below which, which you care about. Maybe there's something I didn't even think about. Basics, let's get into that. The bare minimum that you're gonna need is a good clipper kit. Um, I made sure I got a more expensive one because you don't want it to just last one go, especially depending on if they have like thick fur. So I got this kit, it is in, I don't even know how to pronounce it, Andes, Andes. And um, just got your clipper and the different lengths, kind of like a human kit to be completely honest. And like the oiling and stuff, which I never do. I think this kit might, might be getting a little bit dull but um, it's still doing the job, so we're gonna use it. Other things that you will want are a good pair of scissors. Notice <laughs> You probably want more legit hair cutting scissors. Um, and also, I feel like smaller ones would be a lot better. I just, my ex, I think, got the scissors that I usually use in the divorce, because I haven't been able to find them. And I think they went with a regular hair cutting kit, which he got. And I just keep forgetting to buy new ones, but you know, these work. For now little manicure scissors might be good i just i get nervous about them being too pointy in case they like jerk basically it's for the little details like between their little paw pads or around their eyes or their genitals or something where the razor is not going to be the best option next up is just a bag to have nearby and the last thing which i couldn't find i didn't look that hard so meh is to have a lint roller because you will probably be covered in fur everywhere. At least the way that I do it. So let's do this thing. We are gonna take her and she loves laying down my like my little baby. So we're gonna start here. Oh, I know. And she's got some trouble areas. She is a huge licker and so she will get these nasty knots here. So I'm just going to carefully Trim off these knots, making sure I don't hit any nipples. And just take my time, she's been a little squirmy. I know it's been too long. It's been too long. We kind of also have to just, um, just wrestle and, and it's a battle of wills sometimes. And she knows that when I'm telling her let mama do it, that she's not gonna get her way and she needs to calm down. So, I just cut away the big knots. And just being extremely careful that I'm not cutting her skin. Um, I did 
cut her once just a little bit on her toe felt horrible and she did not stop bleeding for quite a while partially because she refuses to have bandages on her feet um, even like the bitter kinds that are meant to stop them from licking and biting um, I've had the the vet kinds where they guarantee it's going to stay on for days ripped off overnight she is a biter and a chewer and a licker so anything I can do to avoid bleeding is obviously best so I'm just going to take my dear sweet time and cut these knots out she's pretty calm right now she knows what's going on and she's glad to be having these gones she stops fussing over them I've actually <laughs> been wanting to take at least these off like I don't always just let her go crazy I do trim around her eyes and and these little guys but I've just been really busy and I knew that I was wanting to film this and not wait a few months so hey let mama do it you do have to be careful cuz I'm sure like little kids they can jerk at any moment and you don't want to cut them so you also don't want to pull in their hair do anything too quick that might startle them or seem aggressive so the majority of those matted knots is taken care of I've got a good handful here and now I'm going to start in on a razor or on her face I don't really just go body piece by body piece because it just depends on her patience and her tolerance so sometimes <laughs> she'll have like half of a shaven face for a day or one of her legs and not the other three or something like that but you know we do what we gotta do make everyone comfortable and sane huh yeah yeah, yeah, you're cute. Oh, I love you too. Oh, I love you too. <coughs> 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 So for the rest of this video, I am fast forwarding like 16 times speed just because it took me well over two hours to do this whole process of grooming. So we take our time. I always let her kind of sniff it, see what's going on there. Start with the easier areas. And honestly, a big thing is just kind of going with the flow. I try to be thorough on the body part that I'm on, but if she is just not having it, then I will move to a body part that she hasn't like pulled away from. You know, when it gets down to slim pickings or really just needing to finish a certain part, I will, you know, tell her, let mama do it. I'll tell her no, I'll tell her to stop it. Um, but anytime you see me kind of moving her around, I am very gentle, making sure she's supported. Looks like I'm just like shoving her head down, but I'm gently, slowly pushing her head down, letting her know we're just gonna do this. You're gonna have to stay here and it's just shaving around things, um, making sure not to nick anything. Of course, these kinds of, I say razors, but buzzers, I guess is what I'd really call them, but they're really safe, but still they do have just those little slots that the fur goes into. And so I'm especially careful when I go around anything that bends, like those arms and legs, you'll see I kind of pull them taut so that little thin skin has no way of getting pinched in there around the face is the place that I have to be the most careful because she really doesn't like it she doesn't like that or her paws being messed around with and she's very cute and I'm sorry you know the angles and everything aren't super perfect but I hope it does give you a good idea of what I do the fur that kind of tucks in her mouth is the most annoying because you know it's just gross like it's constantly wet with her slobber and she doesn't like me touching it but eventually we get through it. I have to take lots and lots of breaks both for our sanity and also especially because that blade does get hot or the the plate the surface of the blade razor 
I don't know what I'm saying, uh, the buzzer. So I have to take constant breaks. I do wish I had a smaller one. I'm gonna be looking for one, not only so I ha can like switch back and forth, but also so I can do more fine details like around the face, around the paws. I usually do paws by scissors, which takes a lot longer, but I feel like you do a little bit better of a job. But I decided to try it this time with the buzzers and I, I did a pretty decent job. So um, I hope you get some good kind of ideas from this. If you have any suggestions, feel free to share them. She's pretty calm about it. She knows what's going down. She's always going to protest a little bit, but I'm never like angry and mean and she's never in pain. You can see she kind of does like the worm squirm, like I am going to conveniently slowly fall off of your lap to avoid the areas that I don't want you touching. But this went well. I probably would have done this normally in at least a couple of days, but I really didn't have time to wait for another day because I knew it would literally be weeks. Like my schedule is just booked. So it would have been weeks till I could finish her. And so I just did it all in one night. We did a blitz. Took you, probably took half a dozen breaks because I was also doing some laundry at my apartment complex uh, machines at the same time, just going back and forth when a load was done, let her break. Let the buzzers cool down. So the nice thing about grooming her, first of all, is she is a mixed breed. She supposedly, when I adopted her, she is a Bichon and Mini Poodle mix. And even within those breeds, like there's different ways to do it around the face. You can do like the donut look or the close shaven look. You can do the little uh, boots on the legs, that kind of thing. And I've done different looks with her this time. Honestly, I just... She got a little too matted. I didn't want to deal with that. And I figured it was spring. Might as well shave it all off. Let her be nice and cool. And it gives me longer between times that I have to do it. So that was kind of the reasoning behind shaving her down this time. Um, eh, not, not necessarily the cutest. It's very utilitarian. But I still think she's cute no matter what. Of course. She's my fur baby. At the end here, she was definitely losing her patience, and so was I, but we made it through, and then after kind of the big shave, I did bathe her, clip her nails, and do some final shaving. You'll see that up here. If you do have any specific questions, especially because this is sped up, let me know. That's what those comments are about. So her ears, like I, this is probably the part that I regret the most about this grooming decision. And I've done it before, so I'm trimming to the natural ear. You have to be extremely careful because the natural ear has some odd like shapes to it and you do not want to cut that. And so I took my time just very carefully trimming around um, just because there was some knotting and I could have brushed it out but I just did not want to torture either of us with that. So I decided to go for the bad haircut. Also, I didn't do a good job at like where her little fluff helmet starts. I went too high up because I wasn't really being very careful at the beginning of the groom. So she <laughs> definitely has that um, mom cut my hair kind of look <laughs> that every middle schooler dreads. But you know what? The other dogs can laugh and it'll grow out really quickly. So normally I like her with a little flowy ears. It's very cute. It's very much uh, traditional for her breed, but this time we decided to go simple. So doing the nails, the biggest thing is not to cut the quick and I already sped right past that, but I use a flashlight so you can see where the quick is so you don't harm them and I'm very conservative. For a bath, I put her in one of these little things. I just feel like it conserves water, it contains her, it works well. Use a doggy shampoo. Try not to get any of that water in their nose, in their ears. And she looks so pink like a naked mole rat right now. <laughs> but she is a cutie. She loves licking herself clean because naturally I didn't do a good enough job. Sorry, this is really um, a little here, there, and everywhere, but 
after she dried honestly this was the the nails and no the bathing and the final trim were like a couple weeks later I said I was busy and I wasn't lying so I noticed that her tail still was a little matted and there's always a few stray hairs that look like you got them good from when you're shaving but then they kind of poke out especially around the eyes I find once you know they've had a little time to rough around or be bathed so trim those up the I still was cutting off more of the tail and still took a while to brush it out but here is our before and after let me know what you think sorry this is a little bit crazy sped up maybe not best lighting all that stuff but this has taken me hours to film I hope you guys enjoyed this I hope you found it useful if you like ASMR kind of stuff I do actually have an ASMR channel and on there I am posting almost the full two hours basically anything that doesn't have me talking so anytime I have to tell her like let mama do it or reassuring her like you're you're being a good girl then I cut those out but uh, if you just like the like the brushing sounds and the buzzing sounds and that kind of stuff I included that there and it's like the full like two hours so you can watch in more detail of how I went about things so I appreciate you staying and watching and I hope this was helpful to some of you and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day hug your fluffy fluffy friends